Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet. And I'm Sandra Prophet. Welcome to another episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. In this episode, we're going to feature two FJ40s. I'm going to talk about this 1969 FJ40 Resto Mod behind me. And I'll be talking about a 1983 FJ40 Stage 3 restoration. Stay tuned. Almost every day we come across something on a Land Cruiser that wasn't done correctly or shouldn't have been done a certain way. I don't like to complain about all of them and certainly not everybody is an expert. But there are some things that people just have to stop. So we're going to introduce a new segment called Stop It. 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 Just because your dad is a TV repairman and has an ultimate set of tools doesn't mean you can fix it. In this case, this body line. Just because you have a jigsaw that you bought at Walmart does not mean that you should start altering Toyota's body design. This fender flare is for an FJ40, it doesn't fit on this. So to make it look good, little representation of Mount St. Helens there, artistically carved into the bottom of a U.S. 1966 FJ45 pickup bed. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I am really excited to show you guys this 1969 soft top FJ40 body off restoration that we just did. It's one of my favorite builds of all time. There is so much to look at. Let's check it out. So let's talk a little bit about the nature of this restoration. Like all of our body off restorations, this vehicle was completely disassembled all the way down to the smallest subcomponent. And then of course all the body parts were sandblasted and repaired and refinished in T12 white. And then all of the black components, or most of them at least, are powder coated like the frame and the suspension components and all the little black accessories and the bumpers. Some of the items with moving pieces end up getting painted black and so there's a few of those here and there. And then all of the fasteners um, are hand prepped and hand re-zinked in either clear or yellow zinc so that the thing looks completely brand new once it's assembled. All of our FJ40 solid color and FJ60 solid color uh, restorations are painted with a single stage paint so that they can patina correctly uh, from the moment they leave the shop on. Like we do with so many of our FJ40 restorations, we've relocated the rear wheel wells back about three and a half inches and extended the wheelbase uh, just by flipping the rear springs around and moving the shock mounts because that extra three and a half inches provides a lot more drivability and also better off-road ability. This FJ40 was originally a hard top, but we went with a factory soft top replica in this case and a one piece fold down tailgate. So mimicking the factory soft top that would have been available the same year as this. Well, of course, without the factory soft top doors, these are the original FJ40 hard doors. This soft top provides a lot of flexibility in how you want to drive your Land Cruiser. Uh, the side windows and the rear window will zip up and roll up out of the way. And then with an additional zipper on the top, they can just be unzipped and taken out. So you almost have a bikini top on the vehicle at that point. Under the hood of this FJ40, we've got a Cummins R2.8 and behind that an H55F with a brand new split case behind it. Uh, when you install the Cummins in an FJ40, you pretty much have to custom mount everything. So there's a um, new battery tray uh, similar to the factory battery location uh, attached to the frame, but it's further back. And then you can see mounts, uh, new mounts for the AC dryer and the power steering reservoir, the coolant reservoir, and of course the intercooler and radiator combo, uh, ARB air compressor here, all custom mounted. We also spend a lot of time cosmetically restoring um, any of the components that are um, OEM so that this just looks like a brand new engine compartment. Um, I love the Cummins R2.8 and so do the guys in the shop and it really shows by how much time and pride they put into uh, installing one of these beautiful engines. So one of the little details that we like to do on our high-end FJ40 resto mods like this 
is we disassemble the air compressor. Usually these are uh, these are clamps or cooling fins and they're, they hold the motors in place but they're designed to help cool the motor. And they come anodized blue from ARB and they do look pretty but there's really nothing else blue on this car. Um, so I like to disassemble the compressor and send these in and have them re-anodized in a complementary color. So these are clear anodized and I think that that silver looks a lot better with the radiator and with the intake system and a few of the other silver components in the engine compartment. Just a cool touch. I think the leather on the seats of this FJ40 that we used is probably the, my favorite leather we've ever got. It's just so supple and soft and I love this brown color. Um, in the back, we've got that leather on a forward-facing folded tumble seat with shoulder harnesses for each passenger in the rear, and then on a little bit newer uh, model of Land Cruiser FJ40 bucket seat in the front, um, also with three-point harnesses on our six-point family cage, and the matching brown vortex. Lots of times we do body color vortex, uh, but in this case, um, a white vortex kind of looks like cottage cheese and it really gets dirty and so we went with a contrasting color and this whole interior blends together really really nicely. What else we have in here? Standby Murphy gauge for the uh, Cummins R2.8 gives us lots of information about the engine. Uh, the Dakota digital gauge package. This is the HDX series of gauges and they're definitely my favorite that uh, Dakota digital makes. We've got a retro stereo and then underneath that we've got the Gen 4 vintage AC that we use in all of our high-end builds. Also, um, into the dash, we've kept all the factory switches with the, except the HVAC ones and we've integrated the, the vintage air controls um, into the dash in a really cool spot. And then we also have our ashtray switch panel, which houses uh, the switches, in this case, for the lockers, front and rear ARB lockers, and the compressor and the USB port. So the dash um, is custom and stock at the same time, and that's one of the things that makes this rig so cool. We also have our custom Tuffy security console. So we take these Tuffy boxes, the standard uh, eight inch Tuffy, we shorten it two inches, and then we change the configuration of the top pad uh, so that it's full length. We add a cell phone tray or a device tray, and then we recess the opening uh, mechanism into this little escutcheon here. And we also changed the front cup holder configuration, and we added some more switches. In this case, we've got the switches for the rear lights, uh, and the front auxiliary lights, and then there's also a USB switch that just powers up this USB port, and that allows us to have a battery hot charging capability um, without running the battery down by having that little USB LED light on all the time. Um, let's spend some time inside of this FJ40 just soaking it all in. Accessories on this vehicle include um, our off-road front winch bar and an 8274 winch and we've got a couple of rigid uh, flush mount pods in there uh, for auxiliary lights in the front and then it's our rear bumper as well, a dual swing out with a rigid pod camp light in the rear and then you can see the safari snorkel and the custom air intake system for that because this is a diesel that actually will run underwater. Underneath this Land Cruiser, you can see the Old Man Emu 2.5 inch lift with our custom shackle reversal in the front. These axles are powder coated and they are equipped with ARB locking differentials and 411 gears. You can also see the H55F and the brand new 19 spline Toyota split case behind it. As you can also see, the underside of this body was coated with the same brown um, vortex as the inside and that provides for a lot of sound deadening and heat barrier as well as just tightens the feel of the whole vehicle up. These FJ40s, when they're restored like this, really do drive like a modern vehicle. Uh, this rig is comfortable at 75, 85 miles an hour. Might have exceeded that a little bit on my test drive last night. All of this attention to detail really adds up to make these 
spectacularly drivable and long-lasting restorations. Hey Jordy, what are you working on over here? Oh Jeremiah, I am building this Orion transfer case today. We've got this going together for this beautiful 1970 FJ40. And a couple unique things about this is that we're going to actually use the original vacuum shift mechanism for this Orion transfer case. So he'll have all the factory shift options still in the vehicle. The Orion transfer case is great because it offers a, a four to one gear ratio, which is much lower than the factory ratio gives them a much better crawl ratio for off-road use. In addition, it has a much stronger case, so it's less prone to breaking under extreme situations. One of the ways that we can tell that this is the old style case is this round boss right here. The old style cases are much more brittle than the newer updated case, which will have a D-shaped pattern on the bottom of the case where the drain plug is. And so in either situation, the Orion case replaces the aluminum case with a heavy cast steel case, much, much stronger. We just finished this 1983 FJ40 Stage 3 restoration. This one is much closer to stock than the one Jeremiah just showed you. We did perform a handful of drivability upgrades. Up front we have a factory replica winch bar complete with the worn 8274 winch. We also installed a pair of rigid truck light headlights. Even though it's not an original color for this year, we refinished this Land Cruiser in 416 Dune Beige, and the customer chose a set of earlier FJ40 disc brake wheels. Other than those items, the remainder of the exterior of this FJ40 is completely stuck. Beneath that, we have our custom shackle reversal, coupled with an Old Man Emu 2.5 inch lift. Behind the 2F, we installed a new H55F 5-speed transmission and a 19-spline split transfer case. We rebuilt the original 2F engine and gave the entire engine compartment a thorough cosmetic restoration. We powder coated all the aluminum components, painted or powder coated all of the black components, and refinished all of the zinc. Upgrades to the interior of this FJ40 include Dakota digital gauges, a retro stereo, and a Tuffy center console. We also reupholstered the seats in gray leather. Like many of our restorations, the underside of the tub and inside have been sprayed with Vortex Industrial Spray Liner. No matter where you look, this 1983 FJ40 Stage 3 restoration is absolutely beautiful. Today I'm going to talk about the Dakota Digital Instrument Cluster. If you happen to have a Dakota Digital Instrument Cluster, one of the great features that it offers but many people don't realize is the ability to put your elevation and compass direction directly on your screen. By selecting the different groups, you can decide what information is displayed in the corner of your dashboard. Group C is usually the one I use to display that information, and if you get an additional sensor, you can install an ambient air temperature sensor and display that information as well. So you end up with your instrument cluster displaying compass, elevation, and ambient air temperature, all in the nice little right-hand lower corner. It works awesome. Most people don't realize how much they actually look at it until they have it, and then they can't get their eyes off it. Thanks for watching this episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. 
If you like us, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Absolutely, there's tons of good videos there. Also check out all of our online content on Instagram. We are at ProCruiser. <laughs> on Coffagram, we are <laughs> Facebook is Profits Resurrection Land Cruisers and the website is ResurrectionLandCruisers.com. Thanks for watching. Why does it? It's got a very perfect mohawk. So funny. Very important that those things stay It's very important that the microphone hairs are flowing in the right direction and that they're very symmetrical. It's important. All right. I feel like it should be in a Dr. Seuss movie. It's a Dr. Seuss. This one is much closer to stock than the one Jeremiah showed me. However, we did perform a... you. Oh, what yeah. Did she said it's a lot closer to stock than the one Jeremiah just showed me. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay, here we go again.